You know, it's funny when you think about uh, banks, banks don't take financial risk, they take credit risk. And the whole the whole strategy behind a bank is really fractional reserve lending or a velocity money multiplier, right? So the bank may have two, three, four, five hundred 500 grand on deposit. They, and that could be 10, 15 different people, just going to keep it simple. They take that money and loan it out to Mary, Joe, Mike, and the rest of the family to either buy houses, finance cars, get credit cards, or whatever else they could give loans out for except they make 40 cents on average of every dollar that we make one or two percentage points that are in our savings account. Now, the real key is that they have what we call bank-owned life insurance, which earns a rate of return even as they borrow this money out over and over again. So this is when Barry Dyke told the truth back in 2007, Pirates of Manhattan, where he told on Wall Street that all the higher ups, the executives, they were taking their money not into 401ks, but they were putting it into really pensions or life insurance strategies or really kind of mimicking the bank-owned life insurance mindset, right? Or corporate Coley's and bullies, they call them. Why am I bringing this up? Well, today with my partner, Red Gartner, we're going to talk about, you know, how you borrow from a life insurance policy, which is really no different than the leveraging capabilities and abilities that the banks actually do to this day. Anyway, Ed, yeah. thanks for joining us, brother. Hey, What's going on? How's it going, Rob? Was that a good, was that a good lead into what you're a master at? I love the intro there. You know, before we get into it, because it's a it's a heavy question, right? Like, how do you borrow from your life insurance policy or how do those loans work? Yeah. The challenge is that it depends on the carrier yep. and it depends on the product. Excellent. Right. Yep. So, yep. you know, let's first talk about in that strategy that a lot of people do with, you know, whole life insurance. So what has been your experience outside of Bully Coley? How are people using life insurance today in, in the world that you're working in? Yeah, well, first of all, before I'll answer that question, yeah. but what you just said was awesome because you actually broke down that even if somebody is to watch YouTube, oh yeah, you know, get a bank on life, you know, create a life insurance <laughs> yeah. and become your own yeah. bank. Yeah. But, but, and it's hard in a 30 second video to tell somebody they have to understand what kind of insurance carrier they're using, yep. um, you know, what kind of product they're buying. But to the point, it is important to know what's the carrier. Is it direct or non-direct recognition? Is it an IUL versus whole life? Within an IUL and whole life, which actual product is it? Yep. Is it term life because you can't borrow anything from a term life or variable? Yes. Which is really a whole nother level of risk and everything else. Um, and it's important that even if you're armed with the information, yeah. hey, I could leverage my money out of a policy and go buy an alternative asset. Right. If you look at Yale, their endowment, it went from a billion to like, um, whatever, 83 billion over like 40 or 50 years. Wow. I'm making up the numbers. Yep. But the point is like six or eight or 10% was invested in the market. The rest was in all, or, or uncorrelated assets, yeah. alternative assets, yeah. right? And along the way, they gave out distributions that basically resulted in about $3 billion a year in distributions that go to other things. <laughs> wow. So now Harvard and all of the other Ivy Leagues are starting to copy that model, mm. right? But here's the point. So when you get informed and you get educated, if you don't have the right architectural design, you could have the, be the best bricks and the best mortar. If that design is off by, by a foot here and there, the foundation's gonna collapse. Yeah. If you buy the wrong product, yes. right? Or you may, you may get the right carrier and you may get a product that is like, looks like it, but it might not be overfunded. Correct. Right? Correct. So, so these are the things I think you're talking yeah. about. And this requires a much deeper dive, a much deeper conversation. It does. In a, uh, let's call it a financial checkup for the next Yeah, up. Yeah. So let, let's get into a little bit of some of the different ways that you can borrow from different policies. But obviously this needs, like you said, a much deeper conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, the one of the strategies that you'll hear about a lot, and I get confused sometimes when people say, oh yeah, you could do that with an IUL, right? Like you could overfund too, so I'm, I'm, and, and borrow against this IUL. And so in in truth, you can borrow against an IUL, right? Got you it. can leverage money out of there. So if there's 100,000 in cash accumulation, yeah. can you borrow 90,000? What you have to look at is not the accumulation value, but the surrender value. Okay, yeah. Two different things, yeah. right? Because what IUL does is they say, hey, here's this phantom account it's called phantom. accumulation. It's fake news. Which isn't yours. You don't have any access to it. You have what's called this surrender value. Yeah. And this accumulation value is what we're going to credit the interest against. Right. So hold on one second. Yeah. First of all, this wasn't a setup question, but Eddie is so informed in this. 
you have cash accumulation and yep. surrender value. Yes. If the cash accumulation is ninety thousand, yeah. If the surrender is sixty, probably less. Oh, give me a number. So let's say in the first year, and you just give me a number. Crap out of it, maybe it's thirty thousand. All right. Let's say it's thirty. You could borrow thirty. Yeah. But you're getting charged interest on the ninety. Is that what you just said? The you, interest you, credit. The interest rate that's credited based on your index performance is on that ninety. All right. So if the index does eight percent, that ninety gets eight yeah. percent, but you're only able to borrow thirty. Correct. Okay. And how much is the borrowing cost? No different than it would be on whole life. So the way that they set it up, a lot of these carriers will give you two options. One option is you basically pay about a percent, maybe a percent and a half, which is the fixed option. I which assume. is a fixed option. Yeah. It means that whatever you borrowed against the policy. Yep out of that surrender value, it's not getting any more uh, market, you know, participation. I'm coming for you. Yep. So now that money doesn't get that continuing compounding interest. Yes. Or it's, that uninterrupted interest. Say that real simple, real so quick. When you take the money out in this fixed option, you are not getting that uninterrupted interest growth on the on the money. So if you borrow 30. Yep. You're not getting interest on the 90? On the 30. On the 30. Yeah. What about the 90? The Then it would be 60 that's left. So the 30 is taken out. Yeah. All right. So in other words, if you do the other option, not only can you borrow the 30, but you get the interest on the full, on the full 90, 90, but the interest is going to be higher. Yes. So you're going to pay a higher loan rate to the insurance company, but the index has to perform. So yeah. complicated question. <laughs> Ready? And it's okay if it, if we get lost in the sauce. Yep. There's 90 accumulation. Yep. 30 we could borrow. And the market, although there's a bottom of zero, yep. lost 10% that year. Yes. So that means that you paid a higher interest rate to the insurance company. Yep. Um, and you earned 0% in that accumulation. So you borrowed for the bar of the 30. Yep. Let's make up a number. It's 7%. Yep. But you were not credited three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the ninety. You got credited zero. So that means for all the folks that go bananas over IULs because they were just created in nineteen ninety seven, yeah, and they really haven't seen significant market losses consistently. As a matter of fact, the market's gone off right. from two thousand eight straight through to two thousand and twenty, uh, twenty one, yeah. twenty two. Um, they don't understand. They get mad over that the same way an IUL person yeah. gets mad if you say an, a whole life is more conservative for this become your own bank model yeah. structure. Yeah. Question, do the banks own IUL cash value life insurance or do they own I, or do they own whole life insurance? So that, it's a great question. So the understanding that I have on Bully is that because they use tier one capital, tier one, they have to go with the highest rated carriers tier one, son. with the most conservative tier, companies. Say it again. So no, it's whole life insurance. It is because they got to go with tier one. Tier three is for the Cowboys or the people with the broken down <laughs> credit, right? Is yeah. that fair? Yes. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. Eddie's like getting live right now, breaking down the IUL versus whole life. Yeah. But Eddie, do me a favor and go real slow because you are great at this. There's a person out there that has <clears throat> in a whole life policy yep. available 30,000, 50,000 in cash. Yep. And they're going to go buy a car next week. Right. Beautiful. So if they're going to go buy a car right around the corner. We know that if you go to the car dealership and let's assume they're financing it. Yeah. And you go buy a car from Danny, and it's fifty thousand sticker. Yep. The second you drive off, it's worth forty forty five thousand, and then Correct. five years later, it's worth about thirty thousand. Correct. Right. So the car goes down. Yeah. Is there a way that it's a setup question? Is yeah. there a way that if you become your own bank and you buy that car through your bank, that the car is still going to go from fifty to thirty? But the money in the car is going to get separated out, and now it's yeah. going to go in your world and be worth fifty five, sixty thousand. Yeah, love to hear so, it. So you know, one of the strategies is using this to finance your own debt. Yep. Right. So if we're going to go and buy a car, what are our options? So most people go to the car dealership, they get an auto loan. Joey from Brooklyn sells it to them. They they pay it off, right? Joey, and they try and yeah. rob them. Yeah, and they're paying high interest rates and whatever cap, cap insurance, which doesn't exist. Yep. All, all of the different things that go into buying a car. Second option is they go in and pay cash. How did they get that cash, right? Generally, they had to accumulate the cash. So in this concept, the idea is to accumulate that cash inside of your life insurance policy first, then go use the life insurance policy to go and purchase the asset. That asset being a car is gonna decrease in value pretty much no matter what you buy, yep. right? However, 
if you have the right type of life insurance policy that gives you that continuing growth inside of the policy. Is that an overfunded whole life policy? It's, it's a whole life insurance policy. Yes. It has the cash value in it and it's non-direct recognition. So that means whenever you borrow, you get full credit. Correct. Got it. So now you've, you've gone and you've borrowed, you know, you've leveraged, you've bought this car. And now what are you going to do, right? You're going to still continue to save that savings. You create your own amortization schedule and you pay that money back into your life insurance policy. You now become the bank and recapture that growth and keep that in your world. Can I say it real simple? Yeah. Is the 50000 that you borrow from yourself to pay off the car that you pay off over the next five years? Yeah. Even though the car is worth 30. Yeah. Is that 50 going to be worth about 55 to 60? Absolutely. In that scenario? Yeah. Yeah. So Eddie and I are going to do an illustration on that at some point, yeah. And we'll be able to show you folks what it looks like. Yeah. So they can see an illustration where you don't borrow yes. versus where you do borrow. The money's not any different. But how after borrowing it and paying it back through the strategy instead of paying for it. Yep. It'll be worth more money in your world. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> you know, I, I think the biggest thing for people to really understand yeah. is that it's not just a simple, this is how it works, because every carrier has different ways of charging interest and, and, and the policy growing, crediting those policies. And there's different products in IUL. It, not that it's bad whole life, not that it's the be all end all, but those two different products have different ways of doing things. And the, the biggest challenge that I've seen is people that buy one policy thinking they got another. You know what I love about you though, is you want to make sure you find the right policy and company for the person. You're not trying to just go to a company because it's better for you. Correct. Right. That's what's really cool about yeah. being independent, right? Yes. Not captive. Because we want to make sure that we always represent the person buying the policy, not the carrier. Right. Where, you know, we're captive towards whatever those numbers are yeah. that have to be done each year. So our retirement's in order. Right. We are the asset. We talk about that. Yes. We invest in our own business, which is us, our asset. And part of that is the education of putting client first. Yeah. It, it is always about the client first. And it's especially about doing business with companies that have a strong balance sheet that have great credit ratings, because even though we have access to everybody that's out there, we don't want our clients to be with just any carrier. We want them to be with a strong company. <laughs> yes. So we're having fun here, sharing information. Uh, to Eddie's point, and for all you folks that are listening, it's not like, hey, become your own bank, and oh my God, you're gonna be able to borrow from a death benefit two days after you make your first payment. That doesn't work that way, right? right? You gotta leverage off your cash value. The question is, do you wanna save or accumulate I think savings into, um, you know, really taking moonshot into investments while your expenses are paid yeah. through your business is much better than accumulating to a 401k. I'm not saying a 401k is a bad thing. I think if you do nothing and you do a 401k, that's excellent. Yes. But if you do 401k and you can do something else that's even better, more powerful and strategic, then I'm going to say do whatever the other thing is. Yeah. And and I think the, the thing that gets lost in that conversation, maybe this is a different video for a different day, Let's but 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 the idea of, you know, a 401k versus life insurance, where we should be thinking about 401k and life insurance. Yes. Right. How do Why these does that two one things, or the other? right? How can they work together? Yeah. Because 401k is a great accumulation vehicle. You don't see the money. It comes out of your paycheck. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. But the life insurance creates the distribution model that people don't understand. Thank you. And Eddie just said something, and this is for you. Because listen, they teach us to look for disruptive titles that make you listen, right? <laughs> That's the truth. We don't want to do that. Right. We want to make sure that we honor all the different product strategies that are out there. So you may see guys that talk about becoming your own bank and completely alienate the 401k. I'm not, we're not saying that. Right. Right. So I'm saying to you, it's okay if you have a 401k and it's okay if you overfund the life insurance policy. The real question is on a monthly basis, yep. what does your match or non-match look like? Do you understand the risk of fees and the market itself? What age are you? And then how does that complement into money now? Are you just planning for one day in the future to retire and have all this money? It's okay to be successful along the way. It's okay to buy real estate along the way. I wouldn't buy real estate from a fiduciary that's going to sell a REIT. That means they get paid, right? 
I'd rather buy a piece of real estate that's a building that produces, you know, multiple revenue streams versus a REIT. Yeah. But my point is, all of this is okay. The thing that you have to do, no matter what, and I don't care what age you are, every financial professional works for you. You don't work for them. What do I say if they don't, if they, Eddie, if somebody calls their financial planner and they get mad, you what's should our fire, rule? You should fire them. They should fire them. You could hear Eddie in past videos laughing every time I say it. <laughs> it's, it's that laugh right there. But the truth is, if you have a financial planner and they get mad that you're calling them, don't do business with them anymore. They're not worth it. Honestly, right. they're, they're going to leave at four o'clock. It's 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 six thirty right now, East Coast time. The only one that wants to leave is the guys behind the cameras. The guys in front of the camera is going to keep going. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's important to understand that you're in the middle. And all your financial planners, no different than the Rockefellers are around you. They call that a family office now. I'm not saying that we're a family office. Right. We're not far from it as far as what we do because we want to structure and organize all of the different members in your world, hold them accountable to your core values. Real quick, Eddie and I yeah. were on a call with one of our partners, family office. They didn't even understand life insurance. They they came from the place of, yeah, you got to put it in trust. Oh, you got to put everything in the trust. I'm not saying there's not a lot of value there. I'm not saying it's not important to get a successful individual's name and put it into different trusts. But you also need to know what your client wants to do. And if your client wants to buy a bunch of different real estate or a bunch of different other investments and use a life insurance as a bank, you can't just put it in a trust, right? Right. right. You have to be able to structure it the right way. Anyway, it was a really good conversation. We both got educated because they brought up some phenomenal points as well. And at the end of the day, you want to be able to work with a team who is on the same page for your line of thinking, not, not theirs. There's going to be times where behind the scenes, they may reach out to you, each planner, to say something bad about the other person. And my partner, what, what I thought he did was so brilliant at the end of that call. Yeah. He said, does anyone have anything they want to say that they would try and say to me privately? Yeah. That was that powerful. Was. That, was, that was leadership at the highest level. And I offer that to you. Because that spoke the world to me when he said that. It wasn't about me or it wasn't about them. What he was saying is, I'm not going to tolerate any back channel conversations. Yeah. We're going to keep this, you know, 100. Yes. You know, they have the certain good things that they're doing with the family office. Yeah. These guys are my partners. They have, they're, they're doing what I'm asking them to do. Yes. Right? So, so I thought that was a very powerful moment for us and, and something I'd love to share to the world. Yeah, and I, because it keeps everybody on the same page. Right? What That's happens it. when you do that in the That's business, it. in a company? That if you're helps. on the same page as these guys and the other guy, like, you, right? Yeah, it's no different if you were in a boardroom, yep. right? And you have all the different people that run their departments, they're all going to get together and collaborate. You don't need people coming to you after as the CEO. Back channel. Right. Yep. Exactly. Right. Back channel. So that that's what he he made sure that that wasn't going to happen. Take us home, brother. Yeah. So any questions that you have, if you have a, a life insurance policy and you're looking to take a loan, reach out. We'll talk to you about that policy, how it works. Um, and if you're looking to build out a strategy for yourself, again, you can reach us in there. Click the link. One of the advisors will reach out and have a conversation with you. Thank you very much.